Um, good morning or good afternoon, I should say. Hopefully I caught you maybe on your on your lunch break. Uh, welcome to day three of Myrrh Essential Oil in the Bible. Today we're going to be talking about myrrh in the life of Queen Esther. Um, hi, my name is Angela Weber. I am an independent distributor with Young Living Essential Oils. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in biology with a brief stint as a middle school teacher. I have a passion for taking big, complicated concepts and breaking them down into easy to understand bits and pieces. I also have a passion for connecting you with the information that you need in order to make the decisions to support your family's health and wellness goals. So today we are in the book of Esther. Um, I did, yes, uh, on the first day, I did sh share the resources that I've been using in, to research um, this kind of series of videos. There was an extra resource that I used today I just wanted to share with you. That is my workbook from the Beth Moore um, Esther study that I did. Um, I highly recommend this study. It is fantastic. You'll learn so much. Um, it's just a wonderful, a wonderful study. I love anything by Beth Moore, actually. Okay, so today we are um, in the book of Esther, and the book of Esther um, really demonstrates God's sovereignty and his loving care for his people. And the book of Esther is a story, and it is the story of how God used a Jewish girl to save her people from being destroyed in the Persian kingdom. The book of Esther is found in the Old Testament, and we see that at this point in time, the Jews have been scattered. Um, some Jews have returned to Jerusalem, but others have remained in Persia. And the ones that remained in Persia have been assimilated into the Persian culture. Um, Persia is large. It's prosperous. The capital city is Susa, and um, Susa is located in the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula. Now, if you remember from day one, we learned that um, myrrh essential oil comes from um, the plant that is grown in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. So um, that just kind of gives you an idea of where things are taking place. And Persia at this time is ruled by Xerxes. He is the tall, dark, and handsome king of Persia. Okay, so in Esther chapter 1, we see that for 180 days, um, this King Xerxes has displayed um, his wealth and the splendor and the glory of his majesty. So 160 days, that's about six months. So for half of a year, this king has been displaying his wealth and the wonder and the majesty of his um the, the splendor and glory of his majesty. Okay, now at the end of that 160 days, King Xerxes hosts um, all the uppity ups um, in Persia for a seven day banquet. Now, at the same time that he's hosting the uppity up men, his his queen, Queen Vashti or Vashti, is um, also hosting a royal bank banquet for the women because the men and the women would have been separated uh, during an event like this. Now, on the seventh day, King Xerxes is um, the Bible says high in spirits from wine, and he commands for his servants to bring his wife uh, to to yeah bring his wife to him, and she refuses to come. Now, we don't know why Queen Vashti refuses to come. It could be that she's thinking, oh my goodness, my, my husband's drunk, and he just wants to show me off as a trophy wife, and I'm not going to have it. Could be. It also could be that um, she knew that it was not. It was custom for, for the women not to be in the presence of the men, and she wanted to help him save face. We don't know why, but she did not come. And this embarrasses King Xerxes very much. He's very embarrassed. And in his, in his mind, his queen has set a terrible example for uh, the women of, of um, Persia. And he fears that other women in the, in the kingdom may emulate her. And so he decides to issue a degree, a decree, and he says that she is never to enter in his, into his presence again. So it's a pretty harsh decree. And he decides to look for another queen to replace Queen Vashti. All right. So in order to find his new queen, he has all of the beautiful young versions of virgins of Persia brought to the citadel of Susa. And they are, when they are brought there, they're placed under the care of a man named Haggai. And when they get there, they're given beauty treatments. 
Okay, so does any of this sound familiar? You have a guy looking for a wife, lots of beautiful women brought in, they're given beauty treatments, there's, there's a man who's put in charge over the women that's not the guy. Okay, it's like The Bachelor, right? I mean, this is The Bachelor 470 BC, except instead of Chris Harris, we have Hey Guy here helping, helping the women to, to get ready to meet their man. Okay, so there's another man in this story, and he is a Jewish man named Mordecai. And Mordecai, he also works at the palace, and he has a lovely, beautiful cousin named, Jewish cousin named Esther, who he actually raised. And Esther is one of the virgins who are chosen to come to the palace. And when this happens, her cousin Mordecai says, don't let him know you're Jewish. Don't reveal that you're Jewish. And when, and when Esther comes, she also is under the care of Haggai. And she actually finds favor in the eyes of Haggai. Immediately, he provides her with beauty treatments. She gets assigned special food. Um, she gets assigned, uh, I'm sorry, she's fed special food. She gets assigned seven maidens just to her, and she gets kind of moved to the front of the line. So you could kind of say that Esther um, got the first impression rose from Haggai, okay, because she made a great impression. Now, we can assume that the women that are brought to the palace aren't necessarily um, of high kingdom status. So, so it is very reasonable to, to assume that they could not afford expensive beauty treatments and exp expensive products. Um, so when they arrived at the palace, the women received, get this, 12 months of uh, beauty treatments before they even ever met with the king, all right? So let's take a look at what those beauty treatments were, okay? 12 months at the spa doesn't sound so bad. All right, but this is what they were, okay? So in Esther chapter two, verse 12 of the NLT version, it says, before each young woman was taken to the king's bed, she was given the prescribed 12 months of beauty treatments, six months of oil with six months with oil of myrrh, followed by six months with special perfumes and ointments. So we see here in the book of Esther that myrrh oil was an ancient beauty treatment. Um, six months treated with myrrh. Can you imagine? That would be like myrrh facials, myrrh massages, myrrh mass. A six-month um, trip to the spa for myrrh um, treatments. My, and that kind of sounds nice. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Mary Young. She is the, one of the co-founders along with uh, Gary Young of Young Living. And she's amazing. She's an amazing woman with a huge, beautiful heart. And she actually gave birth to her first son at the age of 54. And she gave birth to her second son at the age of 57, which is just amazing in itself. Her skin is radiant. It's almost dewy. And myrrh essential oil is part of her nightly beauty routine. Um, as a bonus tip, hey, Martel, thanks for joining us. As a bonus tip, another thing that um, Mary Young says that she does is at night, she applies animal sense ointment onto her feet, and then she puts... Um, puts uh, her socks on and she says that her feet are just baby soft. So if you are in care, were in care club earlier in the year, there was a month when samples of um, animal sense ointment were mailed out. You probably thought it was only for your animals, but no, try it on your feet, okay? Okay, um, I wanna encourage you to read the book of Esther. It's a short book. It's only 10 chapters long. You can get through it in one sitting. And I it would just be awesome for you to learn how God placed Esther in the citadel of Susa at the perfect time. Um, and I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase for a time such as this, but, but this is where that phrase comes from. And Esther chapter four, verse 14 says, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So enjoy Esther. If you have myrrh, enjoy your myrrh. Use it tonight. Have a fabulous day. And tomorrow I look forward to sharing with you um, where we find myrrh in the life of Moses. So have a wonderful afternoon and I look forward to meeting with you tomorrow. Okay, bye.